Are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. It's this darn tractor. This hasn't got enough power to pull a hat off your head. Maybe the ground's not right. No, that darn tractor. All it'll do is smoke and overheat. Well, why don't you give it a rest, honey? Lunch is ready now. Maybe it'll be better after you eat. Well, I don't know. Maybe we're both getting old. Who, me? No, honey, me and the tractor. Oh, come on now, don't be silly. Let's go in and have lunch. You think it needs an overhaul? Yeah. And getting an overhaul in a dealer shop is expensive. They always try and figure it, so buying a new tractor sounds cheap. And we can't make out throwing our money around. But if it's really as bad as you say it is, then not doing anything might be throwing our money around too, right? You got a point. Now look, Chuck, I like you, and I respect you, and I want to keep it that way. But I've got to tell you, that sounds to me like an awful high price for an engine overhaul. Well, I know how you feel, Sam. And I guess I'm going to have to try and convince you. When you figure what you get for your money, I don't think the price is too high at all. Uh, it still sounds high to me. But I don't want to fight with you about it. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> okay. The most important thing is I've got to get that tractor fixed. Now, I'm already behind in my plowing, and I've got disking, planting, and fertilizing to do yet. That's right. So I hoped you'd help me and fix it up. What do you think, Mac? Well, we could put in some plugs and points, maybe some radiator flush in the cooling system. But you and I both know that with that kind of compression, we'd just be kidding ourselves. Well, there's no argument there. I'll tell you what I'll do. You take the tractor in on your flatbed. I've got to get it into town anyway. And then I'll uh, shop around and try and get a better price. And if I do, I'll pay you for the hauling. All right, Sam. But don't sign up for any jobs until you talk with me. I have a few things I want to show you. Well, what kind of things? Just what you get for your dollar at our shop, that's all. Then you can make up your own mind. Sounds fair. Okay, let's go. Oh, hi, Sam. Come on in. Sit down. Well, how'd you do? Well, I'll beat your price by $40. And even you'll have to admit that Joe Bellows doesn't run any back alley repair shop. No, Joe runs a nice shop. And he's a good businessman. What's that last crack mean? Just what I said. Did he tell you what he was going to do for that money? Sure. Overhaul the engine. Uh-huh. Now, Sam, this is the flat rate manual we use in the shop. I've seen flat rate manuals before. All I want to know is, is how much I owe you for hauling. Now, Sam, just wait a minute, will you? Let me show you something. Now, look. Here's the job we quoted you. See, here's the price. Now, let me read you what goes into that job. Resleeve cylinders. Renew pistons, rings, and pins. Reseat valves and renew guides. Rebush rocker arms. Renew main and rod bearings. Renew timing gears. Renew crankshaft oil seals. Overhaul clutch, oil pump, and water pump. Overhaul ignition unit. Clean carbon. Overhaul carburetor and governor. Clean crankshaft passages. Wash and paint engine. Now, Sam, you're a pretty good mechanic yourself. You check that list and tell me. If you were in my business and uh, had to figure some way of cutting corners to make a price that would satisfy the customer, which of those items do you figure you could let go by and still come out with a fair profit and a pretty decent job? 
Well, I might be able to get by without the new valve guides. Or rebushing the rocker arms. And I've seen main bearings before that were okay even though the rods were worn. Well, the engine isn't out of time, so the timing gears must be okay. And if I didn't change the main bearings, I could leave the seals in place. And I know the carburetor's okay. Mm. Well, the rest would have to be done, though, for a decent job. Good thinking. Now, uh, here's another job I could have quoted you. Now, see what goes into that and check its price. Well, that's less than Bellows quoted me. Now, if you'll compare the two jobs, you'll see that the difference between them is almost exactly what you figured you could leave out of the first one. Now, let me ask you something, Sam. You'll admit these are both engine overhauls. But if you were in my business, which job would you do for the cheaper price? Well, now understand me, it's your tractor. If you want the shortcut job, I'll do it for you. But that price in the book. Does it really need all those extra things? If we didn't think so, Sam, we wouldn't have quoted it the way we did. After all, how long has it been since that engine was down? Ooh, since I got it. But I took good care of it. Oh, I'm sure you did. You'd have been in trouble before this. By the way, uh, what kind of parts did Bellow say he was going to use? Now, there I've got you. I asked him and he showed me his catalog. And every single part is guaranteed to work in International Harvester Equipment. <laughs> well, I'll admit, we don't have that kind of parts here. Our parts aren't just made to work in IH equipment. They're made by International Harvester from the original designs, made on the same machines and of the same materials as went into the original equipment. Sam, I want to show you something. Come on, let's uh, walk over to the parts counter. Bill, uh, we're going to look at some parts. I want to show Sam here some examples of IH quality. Bring those uh, two bearings and those two radiators. Right. And uh, bring out the radiators first. Now, Sam, this first radiator I'm going to show you is the best example I've ever seen of how a part that's guaranteed to work on international harvester equipment can cause a man trouble. You know uh, Joe Bessinger out on Ten Mile Road? Mm-hmm. Well, Joe has a tractor just like yours. Last fall, it started running hot. Well, Joe figured that his radiator was plugged up, so he phoned in to ask the price of a new one and thought the price was too high. Was it? I don't think so. Our prices are pretty competitive. The point is that when Joe called, he was looking at a catalog from a mail-order parts house, and they were advertising a radiator at nearly half our price, guaranteed to fit his tractor. So, that's what he bought. That's right. Now, this is it. Looks all right, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Now, let's have the other one, Bill. Now, this is our radiator. Can you see any difference? Look the same to me. Well, they're not. The parts house job holds less water, has less tubes than ours. So, Joe's engine ran just as hot as it did before he took the old one out. <laughs> well, he left it here with us. One just to put it on display so that no one else would make the same mistake. Now, don't get me wrong. Parts manufacturers are reputable people. They make good parts for some uses. But the point is, they can't afford to make parts for any single line. They have to specialize on the kind of parts that'll work in a lot of different equipment. And some of the time, they don't even have the right specifications. I'll show you what I mean. Bill, uh, give me those bearings, will you? Now, uh, this is a uh, parts house bearing. I don't know what number it carries. Well, it's stamped right on the box, isn't it? Yeah, well, there's a number on the box. But how can you be sure that matches the number on the bearing? Lord knows how many times one of these boxes is open to check on the bearing. And if you're checking on more than one, there's always the chance of them getting mixed up. Not to mention a lot of other things I'll tell you about later. The point is that uh, the bearing that this was made to replace was discontinued only a few months after that tractor came on the market. Now, 
Whenever a problem occurs on an international harvester product, we dealers have to make out a report on it. These reports go to the district offices, where they're studied and approved for replacement. They're then coded, and the information is fed into electronic machines, which process reports on all parts replacements and prints them up. These reports are then studied and analyzed by all interested departments. In the case of this bearing, our plant at West Pullman put it through extensive testing and research to discover the cause of the trouble. International harvester bearings are recognized internationally for their excellent quality due to the care exercised in manufacturing. No other bearing maker in the world has finer equipment for testing the results of the plant's output. Instruments which measure circumference readings within millionths of an inch. Machines which not only evaluate finish, but actually measure any microscopic flaws in that finish. Tests to determine proper stress relief of hardened steels. And all of these tests repeated again and again throughout the factory process. For instance, after bearing races have been made, ground and honed, they're inspected for raceway diameter, concentricity, and run out, plus a bore check, continuously double checking previous 100% inspection. Again, after bearings are assembled, using all balls with identical sizing, they are inspected individually. Then, washed and passed into an air-conditioned packing room, where the bearings are sealed in metal end fiber cans. That don't get opened until they're ready to be used. Now, in all the years of running this dealership, I've yet to see a bearing out of one of these boxes that didn't match the numbers on the outside. You know, with all the work that goes into making these bearings, it beats me why any manufacturer would ever put them up in boxes like these. Anyone can open and handle them while they check on the numbers, letting in dust, perspiration acid from their fingers, maybe even putting them back in the wrong boxes. Well, I didn't know you fellas made your own bearings. I thought they always had to be made by the big bearing companies. <laughs> International Harvester is one of the big bearing companies, one of the biggest in the world. They make most of their own tractor parts? Practically all of them. And the parts they buy have to pass the same rigid inspection as those made out of steel and iron from their own mill. They got their own steel mill? They sure have. Their own ore bolts and coal mines, too. They even make their own nuts and bolts. They either come black or plated and in different degrees of strength and hardness. See, uh, you can tell by the markings on the head the difference. They come in four grades and all sizes. Hmm. You must carry a pretty big stack of parts. We can handle most jobs right out of our own bins. The nice thing about being an IH dealer is that if there's something we don't have, we can get daily service from our IH parts depot that has a full stock of parts for all international harvester products. If we're in a big hurry, we can phone in our order. The order taker makes a check right while we're on the phone to verify that the part's available. To do this, they can not only make an immediate check on their own bins, they can also check the master base records that show the inventories of all other depots. The order is then set up by key punch that feeds into a battery of data processing machines 
that sort out all cards in proper sequence for efficient handling in the warehouse. These work up into picking tickets that are really the final step toward getting your order made up. Now you see the real reason all orders go through the data processing machines. Because these machines know where all the parts are better than any human being and sort the orders out so a man can work right down any aisle without jumping ahead or backtracking. As Soon as each truck gets loaded, it's picked up by an overhead power conveyor that takes it automatically to a packing station and it's on its way. That sounds pretty good. It is, but it still isn't perfect. The system's being improved on all the time, even though right now we're the best in the industry. But the important thing is that every part is made for a specific application on a piece of equipment that was made by us in the first place. I think I get your point. And I know I'm beginning to get your message. Well, I'm taking special care with you, Sam. The way I figure, if I can convince you, I'll make a good customer out of you. And if you don't? Good practice. Do me good. Oh, you do all right. Have you got anything more to show me? <laughs> I sure have. Come on out back to the shop. Hi, Al. That's right, Sam. You stand right there. I uh, want you to look this man over carefully. See anything special about him? No. Well, you go right ahead, Al. Don't mind us. Well, you see, Al here is uh, no ordinary mechanic. He's factory trained like all the rest of our mechanics. No, I mean exactly what I say. This isn't some sort of sales gimmick. These men actually get special training. Some of the training is in how to use special tools that are designed to get parts installed so they'll be just the way they were when the equipment was manufactured. The way International Harvester looks at it, it doesn't make sense to take as much care as they do making replacement parts unless they make sure the men who install them know how to get them in right. To make sure of that, they not only want dealer mechanics trained, but even give them special tools to get the job done the factory way. But there's more to it than just learning how to use special tools. No matter how good they were when they started, they keep on going to school for refresher courses in subjects like hydraulics, electrical systems, transmissions, gas engines, LPGs, diesels, fuel injection systems. There's no end to it because there's no end to the progress that's going on all the time in all of these things. Furthermore, International Harvester provides us with the latest information on all these subjects for our service library. And they don't miss a thing. These men even get refreshers in such things as cleaning cylinder heads, crankcases, and oil pans, brushing out the oil passages in heads, crankshafts, and camshafts. All the things that we believe are important. Now tell me, Sam, when you pay for a tractor overhaul, wherever you get it done, don't you feel that when you get it back, it ought to be about like new? I sure would at your prices. Oh, now you know what I mean. Be serious. Well, sure, I feel that way. But you dealers feel exactly the same way. Now that's why we go to all this trouble. So we can come as close as humanly possible to turning out a job like factory new. Well, uh, that's it. Unless there's some question in your mind that I haven't answered, that's about what I wanted to show you. Now, what do you think? I think it's a lot of money to spend on an overhaul. Well, aren't you going to try and sell me a new tractor? Well, are you in the market for a new tractor? No. Nope. Well, not that I wouldn't try to sell you one if I could. But if you want it to look like new, paint it. Okay. Okay what? Okay, fix it and paint it. Fine. Now, which job do you want us to do? The complete job or the shortcut job? Well, I guess you better do it right. <laughs> 